So in this lesson, we have two objectives. One, we'll try to understand how you can solve problems where you have masses uh, sitting on the table, masses hanging from the pulley from one side or the other side. And the second objective, and which I think is more important, is to understand the Newton's laws of motion a lot better so that when you get more complex problems, you should be able to tackle them because of your superior understanding of the laws of motion. So let's get on with this problem where there is one large mass sitting on the table and there's a small mass hanging from the pulley and the both are connected by a thread which does not stretch. Now, the best place to start while solving these problems is to label all the forces acting on the various masses given in the problem. So we see here this small mass M is hanging from the pulley and we can say that there is a force of gravity acting on this mass. So let's go ahead and label this vector which would be mg acting in the downward direction. So here you have one force mg and since it is attached with a string, this force would induce a pulling force in the upward direction and let's label this as tension T in the string. So we, we know that tension is a pulling force which is pulling the mass m up and you should also remember that if if this force was not there the force mg would just pull the mass down and it would just not hang from the pulley so the the pulling force t is kind of holding the mass m over there we are also told that the small mass m is moving down with an acceleration a so let's go ahead and label this over here this is going down with acceleration a now let's examine the larger mass m which is sitting on the table now we have tension t acting on this cord and since it is one single cord passing smoothly over the pulley there would be a similar tension in the string on this side of the string as well and this is the force which will actually pull mass m towards right so let's go ahead and label t over here so you have tension t again acting on this cord over here pulling mass m we also know that the larger mass has gravitational pull towards the earth and we can label that force as well over here so you have mg acting in downward direction and this would obviously induce a normal reaction in the upward direction and we know that the mass is not moving in vertical direction, you know, it's, it's stationary, it's only moving in the right direction, which therefore means that the normal reaction and mg are equal and are cancelling each other. So because of this reason, it becomes these two forces become inconsequential to the solution of the problem. So this kind of cancels and their relevance is little to this problem. Now we must also remember that since the string is not stretchable every millimeter or centimeter the string moves down or the small mass m moves down the larger mass also moves to the right by the same distance at the same time so the acceleration of this mass would also be a but in the right direction so let's go ahead and label the acceleration would be a for this mass as well now once you've labeled all these forces various forces acting on the masses what you need to do is apply Newton's second law of motion. So this is step two of solving such problems. So Newton's second law of motion says that the net force acting on any body is equal to its mass into the acceleration that gets induced by these net forces. So I'd, I want to repeat over here that when you have a body in motion, there is some force acting on it. It could be one force or the summation of several forces. So you need to find the net force and then you equate this net force with the product of mass and the acceleration that this net force induces. So let's take body one, which in our case is the small mass M and see what are all the forces acting on it. But before we do this, we must remember that we have a notation where we say that all vectors pointing in the downward direction need to be taken as negative. All vectors acting in upward direction would need to be taken as positive. Any vector pointing in the right direction needs to be taken as positive. Any vector 
pointing in the left direction needs to be taken as negative. Now you must remember this is just a notation. You can just reverse what I have said. You could have positive in the downward direction, negative in the upward direction and negative in the right direction, positive in the left direction. In fact, in some of the problems we'll do in future, we'll probably have a different notation. But for now, let's stick to this notation and write the equation Newton's second law of motion for small mass m. So we have tension T acting in the upward direction. And since it is in the upward direction, we'll say T is positive over here. And we also have the force Mg acting in the downward direction. And therefore, we'll take it as negative. So it's minus Mg. And we'll equate it with its mass into the acceleration that has got induced. And we know that the acceleration is the downward direction. So we'll take it as minus A. So this is equation 1. Now, equation 2 we can write for the larger mass m. And we see the only force acting on it, rather the relevant force acting on it, is the tension T. Because we've seen that the normal reaction in Mg is cancelling. And therefore, there's only one force acting on it, which is capital T in the right direction. And since it's in the right direction, we'll take it as positive is equal to the product of mass. And the acceleration is also happening in the right direction. So we'll take it as positive A. And let's label this as equation 2. And you can see if you subtract equation 1 from equation 2, what you will get is mg is equal to A times m plus m. This gives you acceleration for either of the masses equal to m upon m plus m times g. And therefore, you can also find the tension in the string from equation 2. And the tension would equal to m upon m plus m times mg. So you found both the acceleration and the tension. But as I said, what's more important in this lesson is to have a better understanding of Newton's laws of motion. So let's make a couple of observations. Number one is you can see that this factor over here, small m upon capital M plus m is less than 1. And therefore, its product with g would always be less than g. And therefore, the acceleration, downward acceleration of the mass would always be less than g. And it, it is kind of uh, obvious since the tension is impeding the free downward motion of the mass, the acceleration would become less than g. So this equation kind of validates that thought. Another important observation you would like to make is that the tension in the string is always less than mg because again your factor m upon m plus m is less than 1 and therefore its product with mg would always give a number which is less than mg. And this again seems correct. Because if T is larger than mg, then the small mass m, instead of moving down, would start moving in upward direction. So that's another important observation you can make from the derivations you have done. Another interesting thing you can observe is that, let's say if g was 0, if gravity was 0, let's say you were in interstellar space, what would happen? If g is 0, your acceleration would also become 0. And it seems again very correct. Because if there is no force in the downward direction, there will be no acceleration. Likewise, your tension would also cease to be existent because this product over here would become zero, which again seems very true. If there is no force at downward direction, it will not induce any tension in the string and therefore T would be zero. So the point I am trying to make over here is that, number one, it is important to solve the problems in the correct way. You know, there's a method, there's a way of solving the problems using the right signs, using the right um, symbols in the right places, having the correct equations and getting the correct derivations. But what is more important is that the derivations you get, you know, the end answers you get, how you can interpret those results under various situations. And that's what will improve your understanding of any topic in physics for that matter.